Hey YouTube, well, I'm still putting these arms together, but at least now I'm getting them mounted up on the tractor. I've got this video to do, putting the arms together. Probably the next video will be the final assembly of the arms, and after that I'll be doing the hydraulics. And then there's just left to be finishing up and testing. So we're on the home stretch. Let's look at progress this week. Now that I've got one of these hydraulic rams ready to go on, I'm going to position it on the tractor. Our bush is going to get welded in there. And the idea of having these long bushes that are going to get welded onto these sides, that's so that we can position the cylinder inside in the centre, maybe with a millimetre or so side to side movement. So less than a sixteenth, a little bit under a sixteenth of an inch side to side movement. That looks pretty much as intended. As I've said before, I think, I'm doing this over several weeks, so I forget what I said on the videos, but I have changed this from the plans. I found that I could drill through the clevis down close to the cylinder, and it's, I thought that'd be just as good as cutting the cleavers right off and welding a tube on there. I actually thought it'd be better. So that's what I've done. I'm just going to cut these pieces off to where they've got to go, but the basic idea is something like that. So I'm going to cut these on the plasma and get them ground off. All right, a couple of straight plasma cuts on this. I've got my guide all rigged up and it's near enough the right position. And because that was too thick to cut all four of these panels together, i just mark this other one off the one I've done. And then same story here, just go on and make that line disappear. I just roughly marked off some radius or on that. I'll knock off the worst of it and then grind the rest. Take going to clamp them together and get them nice and neatly ground off. I've got it set up on the end of my chop saw table where I do most of my grinding. I'm going to go around and even it all up so all four are identical. I've decided I'm not going to put that rounded top on it. I'm just going to round this over. Slight change from the plans, but looking at it on the arms of the tractor, I think it'll look pretty good that way. And the rounded top is only cosmetic anyway. A little bit hot working out there in that sun. I've got the side plates clamped into position there, just roughly. You can see I've got the hydraulic ram in underneath there and I'd also note it's upside down. I plan to have the inlets and outlets that are covered by those red caps on the bottom rather than the top. I think that'll be better. I'm going to put the front ram into position and clamp the front pieces all together on the arm. Make sure that everything's fitting where it should. Then I'll line everything up properly and start tacking it together. I've got those two side pieces lined up perfectly now. Let's zoom on, in on it a little bit. I'll show you how I did it. Again, could be better ways, but I've got my one of my small machinist squares and I just went all around it and made sure they were all lined up, particularly across these holes here. That was a critical part. So now I'm going to go ahead and tack that in place and I'll tack those two plates down on the bottom. The elbow plates part 029, the wrist plates are part 032. I'm going to get all them tacked on now and then I'll start assembling it again and just make sure it's all going to work. Before I weld anything entirely in place, I want to have the whole arm assembled, prove that everything's in place and going to work exactly as I planned. Then I'll tack the other arm using this one as a guide, make sure they're both the same, test them both again, then go ahead and weld them. Now with that tacked in and the other wrist plates marked in position, I can take that off and tack the wrist plates up on the table, which will be a lot easier to work with. That's the wrist plates down there. Now I've got that side done, and I've just got the other side perfectly aligned with it. And get him on. 
Now I guess the best thing to do is to grab my machine squares again. Well, that looks about right. I'm not going to weld them any better than that until I've got everything fitted up. Uh, I've only got three tacks on those wrist pieces each side. Uh, I think I'll put four on the elbow pieces. The idea being that if necessary, it's going to be easy to cut off. I don't think I've made any mistakes, but better to be safe than sorry. I've always been told that you learn from your mistakes, but I've always also found that learning from your mistakes can be an expensive exercise, so it's best not to make them if you can avoid it. And this is the next phase, going through and putting the bushes in these. Just make sure that you get the bushes right. The um, pieces are handed once the bushes goes in and they should sit flush on the inside. I'll put a bead of weld around them like I have with all the others and they're ready to be fitted on. Best advice I can give you if you decide to make one of these, I thought it was too much trouble to go and drive all the way to where I could get some pipe that I could have used for these bushes and just turned it a little bit so I had some solid rod. I thought, yeah, that's fine. I will just turn that out. Won't need to drill all that much of it. Well, I should have measured it and added it all up before I started because I reckon I'll drill through the best part of a metre of it and must have spent a good day just making bushes. So, yeah, best advice I can give you. If you can get some pipe that's close enough so you don't have much turning to do or if you can get some pipe that actually fits, just change the bush sizes to use that. Save yourself a lot of time and I don't think it will make that much difference to its performance. We can get the bushes in this quick attach fitting now. I've fitted the two down on this bottom section, that's where it pivots on the arm. I'll put these couple in up here. And again, these are all flush on the inside. So just make sure when you put them in that they're nice and flush on the inside and they will be fine. Well, they can be welded up. Weld them in with uh, 6013, that'll be plenty for what they've got to hold. 6013 rods for this, 2.5 millimetres, which is about 332s of an inch, and I'm running on about 25 amps. And that is one quick attach, completely finished. Once I'm finished fitting him up, he can be painted. I'm going to weld the end on this other adult grey end now. Same as before, 78 rods, 3.2 millimetres, that's one eighth of an inch at, uh, I think I've got about 125 amps on at the moment. I've got a bit of a tack on, then I'm going to pull the ram out full length so that I don't damage the seals. So it was a bit more than a tack, but it felt good, so I just went with it. Put a run down this side, no heat going down there yet. I was in the hardware shop the other day and needed another wire brush and I picked up this one. Didn't even stop the thing. Black brush, dark table, half the time I look up and I can't see it until I've had a good look for it. I have a lesson to be learned there. Pick something colourful. Now I'm going to spray some anti spatter on this just because I tend to get well spattered over everything. I'm going to bring the earth lead up onto this this time. Maybe. Alright, get inventive. Now put the vice grip there and put the earth clamp onto the vice grip. The reason I'm doing that is last time I got a spark coming off here and marked my hydraulic ram. So I figure if I put the earth straight on there, I won't be getting those sparks and that won't happen again. Wishing I had thought to do that the first time, but never mind. Checking you're not getting any heat up towards your seals. Dip that in the bucket of water and take some heat out of it. Well, I'll be honest and say I've seen prettier wells, but they're good and solid. Wash the anti spatter off of it and give it a bit of oil and let it sit till tomorrow. Now I need parts. 037 and 038 which are the bushes for the wrist links and this time I've taken some of my own advice instead of drilling them out of some solid material I found that I have some already pre-drilled but just not the right length so I've got four of these which are about 11 and a half millimeters just under a half inch and these which are uh, just over an inch so about 26 millimeters 
Then I cut some pipe. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld the real bushes on the ends of the pipe because we don't need the full length of the bearing surface and save myself some time and effort because really drilling out bushes is time consuming. Yeah, you know, it's gonna take me an hour or two. This will only take me 15, 20 minutes. So I'm gonna do it this way. And as I said, if you can find pipe that's near enough the right size and a pin that'll fit down through the middle neatly, it's probably the easiest way to go all around. Now to weld these together, I've decided to TIG weld them for no better reason than that I haven't done any TIG welding for a little while. Any sort of welding would be fine as long as you can get a good bead on it. I just pulled up just a shade and put a clamp on that to hold him down. Just thinking about it, I'm not going to put a grease nipple in these. I'm going to pack this pipe with grease because it's got a bigger diameter than the hole in there. So it'll hold a fair bit of grease, should last a fair while. Heavy grease so it won't melt out and see how that goes. I think the only uh, couple of things that will actually need grease nipples are probably the lift arms and the pivots on the quick attach. All good, done. That was the one I wanted to do. And in case you're not familiar with that old joke, it's the last one that you always want to do. This is the quick attach fitting and this is the part that fits in there. Start putting it together now and see how that works. Okay, I'm ready to pin this up now and just see how it all fits together. Make sure everything looks right. You can just zoom in down here. They're the only two bushes that I haven't put in properly. They're just a couple of loose pieces that I've sat there. I've got the quick attach pinned on already. Let's zoom back out again, line the camera up. And this is the first of many pit ups I did from this point onwards. Every time I got something tacked together, I'd bring it over, test fit it, even if I had to assemble the whole arm, I'd test fit it, take it apart again, go and weld it, come back, test fit it again. Bit of an overkill perhaps, but better to be safe than sorry, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't make mistakes as I went along. Worked out very well for, by and large. You know that moment when you realise you put something together wrong? It is salvageable, but I should have had quarter inch pins in up here, not the seven eighths which I have allowed for. Bother, bother, bother. Again, that is fixable. Just annoying. Oh, really? Can't even take the three quarter pins through here. Well, I can fix that by drilling that clevis out to seven eighths. There's plenty of meat on it to do that. <laughs> and it needs drilling out anyway because it's the wrong bloody size. It did say three quarter inch pins. So, all right, I'll put the rest of it together as best I can just to make sure that we're still on the right track and if everything else looks good, I will drill that clevis out. All right, I've got to go and drill that clevis out to take the bigger pin. It's the easiest way to fix that issue. All ready to go. I've got the clevis drilled out. I've got the two bushes in here and this wrist link. So let's go getting it together now. question is about these ones fitting in and if they fit in where they're supposed to then the whole assembly is going to work and it will this ram and all this assembly here just clears the arm when it's fully back which is what it's supposed to do I can pretty much go ahead and put all this together. I've got the uh, couple of pins in the wrong spot. Short ones should go here, long ones up there. I've got them reversed, but that's fine for fitting. Very, very good, I'm happy. I am happy. And I've got the ram in upside down. But that's no biggie. Just a matter of turning him around. And she's not staying there, it doesn't matter at the moment. Let's zoom in on that so you can see the actual mechanism of the quick attach. It's starting to look like a front end loader now anyway. So I'm just going to put a little tack on these bushes here to hold them in place. That ought to do that. Now I should be able to take them apart now and get a good deal of that welded up. I'm just welding up these wrist links now. 
Let's go weld these bushes in there. Uh, that worked pretty well. One around the inside of this one, and I'll see about putting them together. I might still get into it, I suppose I better give them a bit of a proper clean. And if you thought that grinder sounded a bit off, you're dead right, it is on its way out. Alright, I'm going to put them across one slat. By putting them across one slat I can be sure that no unevenness between the slats is going to throw it out. Just need my machinist square again. And I keep halfing on it, but if you've got a good set of machinist squares, keep them away from your welding. You get a bit of spatter on them, it doesn't take long to ruin them. I've got both sides lined up as best I can. I'm just going to tack this top edge, so I've still got some movement in it to get him uh, set properly. That's done. Clean the spatter off it and the flux. Hey, thanks for taking your time to watch this video. I do hope you found it somewhat informative. If you'd like to see more of my projects, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Next week we'll be finishing the assembly of the arms. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time.